Welcome to our devos this week, and we have been looking at a fun subject that I call the hard sayings of Jesus. What is a hard saying? Well, it's a quote that's taken directly from Jesus. But if you were listening in context, and you were there and you heard that, you would say, I cannot believe that he said that. I, I'm, not, I'm done. And you would just walk out. You would throw your pop that you bought at the concession stand because you definitely would buy a pop if you would go listen to Jesus. Throw it on the ground and you'd walk out and say, there's no chance that he said that. But I'm here to tell you that he did. And these statements are super, super challenging. And they're challenging even to us. Like today, one of the biggest statements that a lot of us are okay when we talk about it in terms of, how do I say this? In terms of things that we really don't actually have to do. But once we get our faith and the rubber meets the road, it becomes a little more difficult because today, Jesus tells us to deny ourself. Deny yourself. Now, why is this a challenging statement? Well, let's take a look at it first and see. Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him first deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me me. So here's a couple things that make this statement kind of crazy, okay? The first thing he says is you have to deny yourself. What's that mean? That means that you have to first be willing to say all of the desires I have on earth, everything that I have going on in my life, everything that is important to me, I am willing to let that all go in a moment's notice. Now, we had a couple sermons uh, back to back that talked about this. I talked about this with Abram when Abram was called by God to leave his uh, country and go to a land that God had promised him. Now, what happens? It's Abram was comfortable, and God says, I want you to follow me, and he does that. That's called denying yourself. That's called doing the opposite of what you feel that you want to do. And I don't believe, and, and this is, and this is the, the kind of difficult tension in this, I don't believe that the Christian life is always about like, well, I know that this feels bad, therefore I have to do this bad thing. No, but what I believe is that following God And when you're following God and when you're denying yourself and you know that you're listening to his voice, it is so much more rewarding knowing that you're following him than it is to sit and remain in your own comfort. But this statement, I would dare say, is more challenging today than it was back at the time of Jesus. Because as you know, most of us do the opposite of denying ourselves. In fact, our society rewards if you do what makes you feel good. When it comes to everything, when it comes to how you worship God, when it comes to how you have relationships, when it comes to how you spend your money, everything comes down to, well, how do you feel about it? Well, as long as you're happy, as long as you feel good, As long as you know that you did the best you can, you squeezed the most out of life that you could, as long as you did that, then you're honoring God. But according to this passage, nothing could be further from the truth. You see, Jesus first tells us, you have to take all your desires and you have to table them. And you have to follow me and what's going to happen, according to Psalm 37 verse 4, if you delight in Jesus, you will have new desires. So therefore, you might have these things that you gratify your flesh with, but I promise you, if you've never tried this, Christian, I promise you, nothing is more rewarding than knowing you are following after God and serving him and honoring him. There isn't anything. There is nothing more rewarding. And that doesn't mean working for a church. It's not that simplistic. It might mean when you have to call and forgive someone that hurt you and sinned against you, that you have to call and tell them, I forgive you, I'm not holding this against you. Well, that doesn't feel good at first glance. But when you realize that you're honoring the God that called you, and that you're taking your desires and shifting them to the side, and instead moving forward and allowing God to use you and glorify his name, I don't think there's anything more valuable on this earth. But there's some other challenging parts of the statement. He says, deny himself, come after him, so daily following him, that's challenging too, and then take up your cross. Well, you know what Jesus had to do to take up the cross. It was painful. It was uncomfortable. It was awkward. And all of us in one form or another, have crosses that we have to bear. We have to deny ourselves first before we can even pick up the cross. And when we walk with that cross, some of those crosses are illness. 
Some of those crosses are mental problems. Some of those crosses are, are family uh, uh, past issues that we still haven't healed from yet. Some of them are even mistakes that we've made that we wake up in the morning and think about, and we still replay those moments in our mind. Jesus says, you have to walk with that cross. You have to carry it, and you have to follow me. But it starts with being willing to say, all of my desires, Father, all of them, I'm laying before you. And whatever you want to do with my life, this is called surrender. Whatever you want to do with my life, I'm willing. Because I know that to walk a road carrying a cross as I follow you is better than to remain on my own road alone without the presence of Jesus.